After two years of constant protests that too often end in violence, especially on Fridays, Carlos City is closing what is arguably Santiago's oldest and most famous sandwich eatery. Here, everything has been vandalized. They took out the furniture and destroyed it. Same thing with the pizzeria, the pharmacy that was here. Only two of the 18 businesses on this block have survived. He complains that thousands of jobs have been lost since Chile's social uprising began and that public order has been abandoned. On this Friday, protesters are already gathering nearby. These riot police are expected to soon move in to crush a demonstration that's just uh, about 50 meters from here. They believe that it will soon get violent and destructive. And although it's usually only a very small group that take part in acts of vandalism, many Chileans say that these kinds of protests have gone too far and they blame the chaos that they believe is taking place in this country on the left. While left and center left-wing politicians condemn police abuse, they've been reluctant to show support for victims of more so-called revolutionary violence by protesters. Their interpretation was wrong. Chile does not want a revolution. Chile wants reforms, change, improvements, but done with moderation, in peace and tranquility. Many are also afraid of the current upheaval in south-central Chile, where armed indigenous Mapuche groups who are claiming ancestral lands are carrying out constant attacks. All this explains why extreme conservative José Antonio Cast, until a few months ago considered an outsider, is being seen as a savior by Chileans who yearn for law and order. They're terrorists. Some consider me an extremist, but to persecute terrorism is not extreme. Nowhere is the violence worse than in low-income neighborhoods where organized crime and drug trafficking have taken over, especially since the pandemic. 26-year-old Bastián Castillo gives us a short tour of Lo Hermida, where ordinary citizens are too afraid to go out at night. During the day it looks more normal, but at night this is a no man's land. Every day people are selling drugs on every corner or waiting to mug you. The narcos set off fireworks to cover the noise of their gunfire or to announce the arrival of drugs. Monica, Bastian's mother, says that those who sleep downstairs are less likely to receive stray bullets, but that it's more dangerous for her daughter who sleeps upstairs. At least 60 children have died from stray bullets in the last three years. I asked left-wing candidate Gabriel Boric what he'd do about it. We'll be ruthless with drug traffickers. We'll strengthen arms control laws and redistribute police to where they're most needed, not where there's more money. Whether with a harder or softer touch, whoever wins Sunday's elections will be expected to make Chileans feel more safe again. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago.